Hi boys and girls, I'm Mr. Zwicker. And I'm Mrs. Zwicker. And today we're going to share with you a story from the Bible about Jesus and a Samaritan woman that he met at a well. Before we begin, let's pray. Father, uh, please bless your word and uh, thank you for sending us Jesus into the world uh, to give us eternal life. And please open our hearts through your spirit to what you have to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. This story is from the Bible, but instead of reading it, we decided to turn it into a skit so you can watch what happens. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I'm going to sit by this well and rest for a bit. Okay, Jesus, we'll go into the town and buy you some food. Give me a drink. You're talking to me? How is it a Jewish man is talking to a Samaritan woman? You Jews normally don't have anything to do with us. If you knew the power of God and who it is who's asking you for a drink, you would ask him and he would have given you living water. Sir. You don't have anything to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where are you supposed to get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who built this well and drank from it himself, and his sons and his livestock drank from it? Whoever drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I give, it will become a spring of water inside him, welling up into eternal life. Please, sir, tell me where to find this water so I don't have to keep coming back to the well and, and bringing buckets. Go and call your husband and come back. Um, I don't have a husband. You're right when you say that you don't have a husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. You have, so, you have spoken correctly. <laughs> sir... I can see that you are a prophet. Well, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews say that Jerusalem is where we ought to worship. Woman, believe me, an hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But an hour is coming, and now is here, when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father is seeking such people to worship him. Well, I know the Messiah will soon come, and when he comes, he will tell us all things. I, the one speaking to you, am he. told me about everything I've ever done. Could this be the Messiah? Tell us more along the way. Was there talking to a woman? Who was that? Here, Jesus, here's some food. No, thank you. I'm not hungry. Did somebody give him some food? I have food to eat that you don't know anything about. My food is to do the will of the one who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, there's still four months and then the harvest time comes? Look, here come the villagers. I tell you, the fields are white with harvest. Thank you for accepting our hospitality and staying with us for these two days, Rabbi. Some of us believed right away because of the woman's testimony, but we all believe now because of our, your word. We have heard for ourselves, and we know that you are indeed the Savior of the world. Welcome back. That was fun. 
Jesus spoke to the woman at the well about living water. I want to talk about four different things that Jesus said to the woman about living water. Number one. In John 4, 14b, it says, 14b, yes. The water that I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. So what is the difference between a well and a spring? When you want water from a well, you have to put your bucket in and work really hard to get it out. Water is heavy, and you have to pull it all the way back up. But a spring is a constant flow of water. It just keeps coming up on its own. And the more the water keeps coming up, um, it, it just flows out and becomes a stream. That's what Jesus said his living water is like. When we invite Jesus to put his life inside of us, that never dies and keeps producing more and more life forever, he sends us his Holy Spirit from heaven to live inside of our hearts. And the Holy Spirit loves to do the sorts of things that make God happy. Sometimes, like Jesus in the story, we'll get energy that we didn't even have in order to do things for the Lord. Sometimes God gives us wisdom that we didn't have on our own so that we know who God is and what to do when things are confusing. Sometimes God even shows us miracles, things that are impossible to happen without God through his Holy Spirit. And when we sometimes do things that make God sad, the Holy Spirit inside of us is sad too. We have, we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. If we have, when, know, when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we sin, it's like we hurt our friend. And we need to say we're sorry to him before we can really be friends again. But we can say sorry. And he does forgive us. The Holy Spirit inside of us is also sad when we see things sad going on. Things that are a result of sin being in the world or the hurt that comes when people do sinful things to each other. He longs to see these things set right. And he will help us to do things that heal the brokenness in God's good world that he created. And one day when Jesus comes back, or as the woman at the well said, when Messiah comes, Jesus is going to set all of the wrong things in the world right again. And if we have his spirit inside of us, he's going to do it with us as his helpers. Even believers in Jesus who have died and are with Jesus now are going to come back with him. And together, we are all going to help him make the world new again. But even now, while Jesus is in heaven with the Father and we're on earth, Jesus wants us to be on his team of people with new creation life bubbling up inside of us, helping us to do right things in the world. So number two, Jesus spoke to the woman at the well about eternal life. But what is eternal life? Jesus says, And this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. The Spirit in our hearts, if we know Jesus, he's in our hearts, and he knows God. And we can know God through him, and God knows us as his friends. And he wants to be our friend forever, even after we die. And even after that, because he will bring us back to life in a new body that can never die. So eternal life is being friends with God. That friendship starts now and it continues forever. Sometimes when we talk about being saved, we think it's just about getting to go to the good place instead of the bad place after we die. But this verse tells us that eternal life with God begins now, and it goes on for eternity. So what does this living water do? The living water that Jesus spoke about to the woman does the same thing as the food that his disciples didn't know anything about. Jesus was energized to do the Father's will in telling the woman and the villagers about the kingdom of God. That energy did not come from food that he ate in his body. It came from the Holy Spirit inside of him. If we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, he will also give us the power to do God's will, even when we don't have the power to do what God wants all by ourselves. So what did Jesus say, this is number three, about living water? Jesus said, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks of the water that I will give him, he will never be thirsty again. Once the Spirit of God comes into a person, they forever belong to Jesus. 
His spirit lives inside of them and gives them the desire and the energy to do the sorts of things that please God. And once we have eternal life, bad things can still happen. We can still sometimes choose, choose to do bad things. And there is nothing bad, but there is nothing bad we can do. And there is nothing that can happen to us that can take away the eternal life that God gives us. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit a pledge or a promise, and God never breaks his promises. So Jesus said in John uh, 10, 27 to 30, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them. and They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. I and the Father are one. And in Romans 8, 38 through 39, it says this, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing at all. The woman at the well talked about how the Jews offered sacrifices to worship God in the temple in Jerusalem, but the Samaritans, like her, offered sacrifices on top of a mountain. But in both cases, they had to offer those sacrifices again and again, day after day and year after year. Just like that woman had to come to the well every single day to fill up her bucket. But all those animal sacrifices offered over and over were just a pointer to the real sacrifice that Jesus offered to God one time for all sins, for all people, when he died on the cross. Jesus was a perfect sacrifice, so his blood takes away sins forever. Eternal life can't be taken away. It lasts forever, and it doesn't run out. So number four, how did Jesus say we get living water? Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have actually asked him and he would have given you living water. Well, just like the woman at the well, if we ask Jesus, he will give us living water too. So how do we do that? First John 1, this is the message we have heard from him and proclaimed to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and we do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Well, the woman at the well had some sins too, didn't she? And at first, she thought she needed to hide her sins. She thought she was good at that. But we can't hide our sins from God. And if we try to do that, then it just separates us from God. Jesus knew she needed to confess her sins. And when we come to Jesus asking for eternal life, we need to come as sinners asking for forgiveness. I remember when I was five years old, and I asked Jesus to come into my heart and forgive me for my sins. And he did. It was as simple as that. And he will for you too. All you need to do is ask him. So let's pray. Father, I thank you for all the kids watching and the grown-ups too. I pray that each and every one would come to know you and ask you for eternal life through Jesus. And I thank you that you will say yes, and that you are faithful and just to forgive and cleanse us and prepare us to serve you and be with you forever. I pray that we will each listen to your spirit as he helps us to do your will. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And thank you.